I'm Lisa, and thanks for checking out my channel. Today, we're gonna go through Santorini uh, and how to play. We're gonna go through the basic two-player beginner version that they recommend that you go through before you get into the God setup or a three or four player. So let me get right into it. All right, so let's go through how to set up and play Santorini. Uh, setup is extremely easy. It's literally just taking this board and attaching it to this piece here. And it snaps in pretty easily. Um, you just line up these spaces here and then it snaps right in. Um, the instructions that come in the box are extremely straightforward. I'm just gonna go through the basic two player variant that they want you to start off playing. Once you get comfortable with the game, you can see that there are uh, different variants that actually use the God powers as well as how to play with three to four players. So when you're just getting started, these God cards put to the side, you're not gonna need them. So uh, what you're gonna wanna have handy are your pieces. So you have your level one, which kind of looks like this, your level two, which would look like that and stack on that, three, which is this mount piece, and then your domes. Um, I have them in bags. They come in bags, and I think it's easier to have the bags personally um, by the game because it's organized. So I just have my level one, two, three, and the dome bags nearby for when I need them. And then you're going to need your player pieces. So I just grabbed uh, two different colors and there's two workers per player. So the game states based on the instructions that the youngest player goes first. Um, obviously if you can determine if you want to follow that rule or if you want to come up with a different way of, of who goes first. Um, so first player is going to take their pieces. So first player in our case will be blue and they're going to place them anywhere on the board. And then player number two does the same thing. Okay. So the way you are going to uh, move in Santorini and the way you're going to play uh, on every turn, you do two things. One, you move Two, you build. That's it. You move, then build in that order. As the game progresses, if you are unable to move any of your pieces or you are unable to build for whatever reason, the game is over, you've lost. So uh, first player blue, I'm going to move and I can move in any unoccupied place that is adjacent to my worker. So if I'm choosing this one, I have all these eight spaces here that I'm able to uh, choose. If I was choosing this worker, right, then I have these spaces available because they are directly within my influence, they're surrounding me, and there's no uh, player in my way. You cannot move in a space that a player is already in. So let's say I wanted to move here, right? So I would make that move, and now I have to build. I have to start with a level one building because there's no other building to build on top of. And again, it's within my influence, but I can't build on top of a player. So let's say I decided to build like that. That would be a legal move. Player two does the same thing. Move, then build, right? So I can move, let's say I wanted to move here, and then build. So I can also grab a level one building and put it anywhere within my space. After that, you can start to build up. And it doesn't matter whether it was me or my opponent who placed the building. So if on my next move, I wanted to move like this and then place a level two on top of that building, I can totally do that. The way you move on top of buildings is you can only jump up one level, meaning that this player can move here and then of course do their building somewhere. So let's say I wanted to build here, but I would have not been able to jump from here to here or obviously even higher because you can only jump up one level at a time. So if this was placed here, 
I would be able to jump from here to here, but I would have never been able to jump from here to here. You can only jump up one level at a time. However, if you do get to a point where you are on a level two building, you could jump all the way down. But again, you just can't jump back up. You're gonna need to have that extra layer to get you back up there. The end goal is to be able to have a, that third mount on top and eventually end with your worker on top of it. If you get to that point, you win the game. And there's a lot of strategy involved in blocking your opponent to being able to get to that point. So that's where these clever domes come in. So if at any point I didn't like that a player was getting close to being able to jump on that third level, once I move, if I'm in the vicinity of a building like that, I can top it with a dome like that. And that means that that building is off limits. Obviously, no one is going to be able to mount on top of that building, me or my opponent. In this variant, you are not taking buildings down. You are not deconstructing levels. So once it is built, it is built, and you are just navigating around the board. And like I said, play goes back and forth until one person gets on top of that building on the third level. And it's that simple. That's Santorini. So that's how you play Santorini. As you can see, it's pretty straightforward. As you get more comfortable, you can start to introduce those god powers or invite more players to the game. If you're looking for my reviews, please go ahead and check out the link below, which talks about this game. Uh, if you're looking for an unboxing, I'll include that as well. Thank you for watching. Like and subscribe, and never stop playing.